Okay, this video is going to be about the different ways that you can increase your attack statistics. Um, one of the main ways is to go to your sheriff and change their gear. Uh, I have another video in, that goes into detail about um, forging gear, um, selecting the different types of gear that you would like. Uh, right now I have my construction research gear on because I'm not fighting, I'm just researching and constructing. So when you have your gear um, on, you can actually click this button at the bottom. Um, it's like the bar at the bottom. And you can create presets for whatever you want. And these presets include all the different gear that you have. And then the gear that you choose to select, you can add crystals to it and whatnot. This is really important whenever you are creating your uh, attack statistics because you want to be able to uh, increase your attack stats. Well, now that we've talked about the sheriff um, gear and and um, crystals that you can put into it, um, you need to go into your blacksmith and to forge to actually really get in depth of what equipment would be the best what inlays, what ingredient, what you need to do to do that. And oh, there's so much that can go into this. Combining crystals, if you go into the different crystals and the higher the level of the crystal, crystal the, more, the more that you will bring um, into it. So say, um, let's see. So you have the different types of uh, crystals and um, just just look and see open it up and actually look and see um, which of the which of the crystals will actually benefit you so this particular one the crystal bandit increases your infantry and your range attack and you can go in and you can combine them and make them bigger all right so uh, like I have range, I have this level one, I can combine it and increase it up to create another level, um, another level five range crystal. Okay. So I just, I just created a range five crystal and I go back and there's my range. Oh no, not a range five crystal range six crystal okay so now i can go in and implement that into one of my um range um range gear and that's going to increase my attack range attack by 26 percent. just that one little crystal pretty awesome huh uh so knowing how to increase your crystals and increase the power of them will help you uh, increase your uh, attack st statistics. Now, there's a lot of equipment that you can choose from. And the thing that I like about the uh, forge... Is it not in here anymore? Beep, beep, beep. Okay. So, when you go into your inventory and click equipment and inlay, and you want to... Uh, Say you want to look up all the different equipment, but you want to filter it by just doing range. So I'm going to click that, and it's only going to show me the range. Now, this is the stuff that I have. These are the pieces of equipment that are uh, owned by me, that I currently own. All right? And the ones with the red dots mean that I can start either enhancing them or changing them somehow. When you see the little uh, shirt in the upper right hand corner of each icon, it, that's the ones that I'm currently wearing. All right. So um, let's go to this one. And if I want to enhance it now, I've been trying to get more blood agate. And I just, I, <laughs> I am not getting it. It's getting really conf um, frustrating that I'm not getting it. Um, I've been getting some here and there, but it's just not working. So, decompose. 
Compose, decompose. <laughs> combine. 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 Oh, I can't combine. Darn it. So now that I've um, gotten that down and I can build it up again, I can now enhance uh, this particular piece and I'm going to go from making it um, that blue level at the top and I'm going to enhance it and it's going to increase it to um, the purple level, okay? Um, Isn't that a cool little icon? It's working on it. Bink, 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 the little hammer. It says that it's enhancing that. All right, so um, making sure that you are able to put your crystals in and making them work for you, not against you. Um, and make sure you're really taking advantage of all of these things, all right? I'll post in the description the different types of crystals and the video that I have that goes over crystals and uh, forging equipment and whatnot. Now, if you want to see what exactly your uh, sheriff will give you, uh, click the arrow in the upper right hand corner right below where your gold is and it'll tell you what, what kind of boost that just your sheriff has, right? And this is with all the presets and everything. Now scroll down more to the bottom because that's where the specific boosts are for the different types. Now you have the inf infantry combat, range combat, cavalry, artillery. But mainly what we are looking at for this video is the attack statistics. So right now I'm just dressed in my construction research gear. And so my boosts, reflect that so right now i have my infantry attack range attack cavalry attack so they are very low okay so say if i were to change into my range gear and then click this again go down to infantry do you see how that increased my range attack just by having the gear changed okay so when you have specific gear applied to your sheriff, you will be able to increase their attack strength. Now, my gear, my crystals aren't really as good as some other people's. I've seen I've seen attack statistics that they're in the thousands, which is pretty amazing. And that's when you really get into forging, you really get into doing all of that. Uh, now, you can in your sheriff go to the skin center and you can purchase or try to get a different type of sheriff now they give you two defaults with the game you get sheriff joe and then um annika all right now they have the other skins that you can get and they each have different things that you can purchase so i am range strong i will always want to see if i can get range and so you just keep going through all the different um, all the different sheriff skins that you can get and just check and see which one you want. All right. Uh, so the best one that I've seen is is this one, Sheriff Nuka. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's how I'm saying it, Nuka. Uh, because his troop attack, troop defense, troop life, it doesn't matter what you favor, but his troop attack increases by 50% by having him and that's if you're using him you see right above that it says active in use but if you were to just own him and not be using him but own him your troop attack would still increase by 10 percent okay 
So my skin right now, my default, has no boosts. But because I have gear and all that, that will increase. But if you want to increase your um, attack stats, you can do that. So say if I wanted to have another one that's specifically range strong. I'm just looking here. Um, uh, Sheriff Haley is range strong, but she will only add 2% um, attack if she is... Uh, chosen and then let's see here um, Sheriff Fortuna also is range attack and this is if I get her then I don't even have to have her in use but if I own her I will get 2% increase um, let's see that's infantry range attack. So Veronica is a little bit more because she adds 3% for a range attack. So when you are coming in here and you're looking at the different sheriffs you want, you have to know what you want to do with your account. You need to understand what you want to focus on. Granted, if you want to be heavy and have good statistics on every single option of your troop force, then you need to work towards getting all these different skins. But remember, when you are fighting and you want to implement your statistics, you have to be quick in changing your different sheriffs so that they will attack the correct force with the correct amount. So if you have three different skins and they all favor different types of troop force, then you need to be able to switch them out whenever you're fighting. And that can that can take some time. When you're rallying on, rallying on someone, you can actually go, you can start the rally, set your troops, set your heroes, do all of that, but then you can go in and switch out your sheriff as the rally is building up. Because once you start the rally, you can still change out the gear on your sheriff, you can change out your sheriff. So just just be aware of that. All right, so there are all those options. From what I see, the best option is to get Nuka because that increases your troop attack on any troop that you have. So my opinion is to get Nuka. Now to unlock him, you can only get a 90 day and to get it, you need to um, do the duel for glory. Uh, it's a reward that you get and it's, it's kind of difficult to get him. All right, and you can also keep an eye on the blog schedule and seize the opportunity to get it when it's available. So just keep an eye out for Duel of Glory event, and then you can uh, get that. And the Duel of Glory event is that little gun right there, right next to the um, instructor building and the cabin that I'm building up. All right, so another thing that you can do is go to your actual town center skin and look at the, the skins that are there. Now, I have um, the default classic town, and I was able to earn the spooky house permanent skin. Now, whenever you are working towards getting the permanent skin, you need uh, 1,500 uh, skin tokens in order to get it. So, say I wanted, like, say I wanted to get this Christmas glitz castle, all right? Uh, if I want to unlock it, I need to get uh, 1,500 um, permanent uh, Christmas Glitz Castle pieces, all right? Now, I don't have any for that particular one, but if you want to look and see what you have in pieces currently, you click on the little bag that has a puzzle piece, like, negative space on it. Now, I'm working towards the Mayan skin. I have 10 pieces for the permanent crystal flame. Um, I'll tear her. And uh, I have 170 from the permanent playful party pub skin. Say that five times fast. <laughs> uh, so, if you want to work towards a specific skin, you need to look through all of them and actually decide which one you want. Now, the Grand Tour has troop attack, but it's infantry heavy um, when you have it in use. But when you own it, you get an increase of 
5% troop attack. Um, the cavalry stronghold, I mean, that's obvious. It's heavy on cavalry. And it, it, it does look pretty cool. I like that it has a guy on a horse in it. Um, and each of the skins sh reflect differently inside your town view, which is kind of cool. Uh, so this is Calvary Strong, and then the Christmas Castle is construction training. Um, the Pyramid Palace, you can get a bigger attack. Um, so that's great. Pyramid Palace is actually probably one of the better ones because it increases your troop attack no matter what you favor by 50%. So this one, much like the, the Nuka Sheriff, uh, increases just everything. And so maybe this one should be one everyone should be working towards uh, because it incre increases that troop attack and it just it gives everybody a benefit. And that way, because most people that are becoming familiar with these skins will at a glance just be able to see the town that they're hitting like i have spooky house everyone should know that's range heavy and that will increase range hitting and defending um but if you had this one that just means it's going to increase all of your different types of troop attacks uh now the moulin rouge is infantry the imperial citadel is also um, troop attack heavy. It increases your march queue. Oh, that adds another march queue. That's pretty cool. Uh, also increases your troop speed, up saving speeds, but we're looking at specifically attack stats. But you want to look at all the different benefits. The fantasy circus increases cavalry. The Mayan temple increases range attack. The troop uh, or soul uh, castillo increases infantry the nutcracker palace is also infantry the clown park is range attack the uh, jubilant party house is just all around troop attack and the crystal flame um athlier which is i have some of these pieces just a little bit it increases troop attack and infantry. Um, the Erie Pirate House increases troop attack and cavalry. The Christmas Glitz Castle uh, increases construction speed, some troop attack. And the uh, Fountain Villa increases troop, uh, troop attack and range. The party play the playful party pub increases uh, construction speed and troop attack troop defense so this might be a good one if you don't want to switch out your skins to have this because it does increase your troop attack by 15 percent but you also get um, an, a boost with construction and research and troop training um, spooky house increases range so this is probably one of the lesser ones of range uh, but this is one that I chose to work towards, and that's all the ones that are permanent. So I suggest if you are working towards anything, um, especially if you want an increase in troop attack, um, and that's what you're really favoring, is to get the Pyramid Palace, all right? And to unlock it, you can get a 90-day Pyramid Palace, a one-day Pyramid Palace, and whenever you are looking to unlock it, I mean, this this one doesn't doesn't always have the option to get pieces for, um, so you can get a ninety day one or even a day one, and they are given out for the Duel of Glory event. Um, additionally, um, they give them out in other odd events like the, I believe the auction and stuff. But this one's probably the top one to get if you want to increase your troop attack overall for all different troop types um with a town center skin okay um another one is to just increase your troops and keep increasing your troops um right now on the agent side i've only i've only unlocked the level ones the a1s because i haven't increased my town center to 27 and um, in order to get to 27 to unlock these troops, uh, I simply need to, there's a lot of stipulations. Like in order to build up my town center, 
I have to have the Defense Factory at 26 and the Town Hall in the suburban town um, to 16. So right now I am building up my town center um, for my suburban, but it's I still have 75 days left. And I think, I think when I started it, I had 130 days. And as, as soon as I get speed up, sir, um, I use the, the treasure maps in the sheriff whenever I do the treasure hunt and get the Western Pioneer artwork that decreases eight hours. I usually get between five to ten of those a day and that decreases it by, you know, five times or five times eight, um, five, uh, ten times eight. So it can decrease it by quite a few hours if I get those. Um, but building and all of that, it takes time. So if you are saving up your speed ups and whatnot, you can do that. Um, once I unlock these troops, I can then unlock more mercenaries. Um, I have to do research to do that in the suburban town. And so I'm just, I'm just continually, um, researching, continually doing that. Um, the suburban town doesn't have a second queue to research, but it does have a second queue for, um, mercenary building. Um, but you can only do one at a time when you're building your mercenary town center. So I couldn't build the town center and then be building another building until that town center's upgraded, if that makes sense. Um, and I haven't um, unlocked the T5s on the cowboy side either because I need to be at Town Center 27 in order to even unlock that. And you can see that in your research when you go to your research button at the very bottom, the advanced in economics, the advanced combat, in order to unlock them, I have to acquire the academy to be 227. So not just my town center, but in order to grow my academy, I need to have my town center at 27. And I'm sure there's another building that needs to be built to level 27 in order to increase the academy. So it's quite the domino process to get to the point to even unlock those troops. Now, another thing that you can do is increase your instructors. And your instructors are even more specific to what you want in order to build your statistics because they now have instructors that specify for agent, mercenary, cowboy, and then they have the generalist instructors. And so you need to choose and go and look into detail about what these instructors are able to give you because if you are only selecting whatever ones you get first, that's great and dandy because if that's all you get, that's all you get. But right now, I have unlocked um, several of them. I have five more to unlock. But you need to click on each and every one and see what they are able to give you. If I wanted to focus on just agents, then I can select the four at the top. And the mercenary, I can select the four or the three on the left. Cowboy, the three on the right. And the generalists are at the bottom. And they, each of them all do different things. All right. So right now, I, I'm i really strong with cowboys. I have quite a few T4s. And granted, I'm not as big as a lot of you out there. And a lot of you that are that are huge in the game but i i have a lot of cowboys and so if you want to focus on the cowboys then you need to look and see you can see the little green hat um right by their name in the bigger picture or on the small ones on the side they're right above their their medals and you can see that's cowboy right the little green hat so if you want to focus on the cowboys then you can when you're looking at this screen if there's a medal in the upper left-hand corner on the icons on the left side, that shows you those are the instructors you have in place. In the big picture, if you see the stamp with like kind of the red stamp with the eagle in it, with the crown, that means that you have them as your instructors, your set instructors, all right? So I have two cowboys right now. 
And um, so I have, each of them are a little bit different, okay? Now, go into detail which one will help you more, which one will help you less. Um, and choose the one that you want and start building them up. Now, going back, and we're going to go over to the hero side and favor which heroes you want. And similar to um, the the instructors, but these are just specifically about troop types, range, infantry, cavalry. And you can see the type that they are by the little icon in the bottom left, right above where the stars are. So Javier is range, uh, Ames is cavalry. Whoops. Um, over here, Hank Turner is infantry, and you can see that, and they're color coded. Range is green, cavalry is blue, um, infantry is red. You're not going to see any of artillery because that's not really something they use to fight. And then you have the ones like Davies over here that has a little purple hat, and they cover all. So if you want to set heroes for everything, then you need to see what heroes are available and what you can actually use them for. Now, I have made a spreadsheet of all the heroes and how it helps break down who is in range, who is in infantry, who is in um, cavalry, what ones are all and what they do uh, at a glance. The spreadsheet has everything so you don't have to go in and click through everything and see what their skills are, what level you need to get, um, what attributes they have. And so there are a lot of different things that my spreadsheet that I've created will help with. Now, in order to get the most out of your heroes, you have to also preset them when you are starting a attack. And that's similar to the last video I showed where if you want to do a gang of bandits and just see how your attack statistic is set, um, you have to set your presets for your attack, your troop presets. So whenever you click on that and say, I want to do all the range, I have already selected all of my range presets. All right. So if I want to edit these presets, I do this in here and I go up to the top where it says edit preset and I can change whichever heroes I want, okay? So, say if I wanted to reset all of these, um, or even edit it. So, um, I currently don't have any T5s, so even though it gives me the amount to select, I can't do that. But say if I wanted to come down here, and I have 100% marksmen, and so, even though I've increased my marching capabilities and that, like my town center as it increases, I then increase the amount that I can send on a march. So as long as that percentage says 100%, it will continually change. So I haven't had to change my preset for months because it constantly will include the amount that I want to send. When someone starts a gang of bandits or starts a rally, and they say whatever one they want, then that's great. I can actually just click my preset, send it, and it'll always send the top amount. Now, because they have the additional troop um, types outside of the range infantry, but the actual different troop types like agent, um, cowboy, and others, you can set your presets to include those. So say if I wanted to do a range, but I didn't want all, all of them to be the teeth, the, the cowboys. So say I wanted 33%, and you can actually either use a scroll bar or go over here and do like 33.33, whoops, not 300. Um, and I just wanted that much, and I wanted it evenly spread out through all of them. Then I go up here to Marksman and say I wanted to do, um, I think the other one is the Doom Executioner. So I wanted that to be 33.33%. And then I wanted um, to come up here and do 
the um, Doomsday Judge, which is the T4 for the um, agent side, then I click in here. And what I'm going to do is because I have like the 0.01% to make it 100%, I just use my toolbar to do it over. So if I wanted to split it through all three different types of uh, troop, cowboy, agent, and um, a mercenary. So if I wanted to spread it evenly through the three, then I would put that 33.33 and then one of them would be 0.01% more. So this is a way to do it. Um, this is also a way to uh, set your attack um, for meat shields and everything. Now I can't do that because I don't have the agent or the uh, mercenary T4s um, or A4s and um, M4s. And so I can't actually set that. So I'm going to clear and I'm going to go back down to my marksman and I'm going to just do that to 100%. Now, when I hit that clear button, it cleared out all of my heroes as well. Now I can quick select. It was automatically going to set the top five heroes that I have, period. It'll click the top five, even though not all of these are are uh, range heavy. Uh, actually, only I think only two in here is actually range heavy. Now, I'm going to clear it again, and I'm going to start clicking it one at a time. Now, as I click through, I can select whichever ones I have, and I'm going to select all the max ones that I have, and it'll tell me on the right-hand side how it is increasing my range attack, okay? So I'm going to click my top range people and see how it grays everything out. It then uh, will show me what my range attack is, but I've already selected five, um, uh, five heroes that have range attack. Now, say... Say I wanted to try something different out and take that guy off and select her. Did that increase my range at all? Uh, not really. So just experiment with this. What's going to increase your range attack? All right, that didn't do anything. That didn't do anything. That mm, The ones I had selected the best. So that didn't really do anything. And this is one of the heroes I had um, chosen prior. So I'm gonna go back up here and, and click on her again. So previous to making this video, I had selected um, that hero down there because I, I thought my range attack would be stronger. But this is what you need to do to increase your attack. So um, I didn't have her as one of my heroes but I had him and you can see the range attack went from 152 down to 136 so I lose range attack percentage by selecting this rare hero but I want to increase my attack so I'm going to select her and that increases it to 152.4 so this is where I'm going to go when you are setting your different presets, you need to go in here and as your heroes increase, you need to change these because you will get different attack percentages with every change that happens in the game. So make sure you're on top of that. And so I'm going to save this. And so I just increased my range attack. Okay. Um, now I'm going to X out of this and go back out here. And so... Um, I have my uh, range boost, excuse me, sorry. Uh, when you're in this, before you actually set your rally, you can click the arrow on the right-hand side, right where your sheriff is, and you can implement these additional boosts when you attack. Now, I have a 20% attack boost, and this will last for 24 hours. So this is really good for SVS 
for AVA, any of those. I have 10 of those right now because I don't really fight very much. I want to fight more. You can also pay gold to get uh, 20% attack boost for 7 days. Um, you can get 20% defense boost. You can get a 7 day defense boost for 20%. You can also increase your march size by 50% for 4 hours. So say if you are... Um, you are rallying this really big player, but your rally capacity just really not that big, but you want to increase it by 50%, then you can use this. I have four that I can increase 50%. Um, you can also pay in gold that amount there, 20% for four hours. So there's, there's those additional boosts that you can have. Granted, the last thing I was just saying is not really focused on attack, but it will help. Okay, so right now, I only, let's see, I only have that many marksmen um, because I'm using them for something else. So if I were to start this rally, then um, my marksmen, I wouldn't have enough, but hopefully other people would fill in and um, fill in the gang of bandits. But granted, I think I clicked on a gang of bandits too, so then the amount that I have would be well over self-sufficient or sufficient, not self-sufficient. All right. Um, another thing that you can do to boost your attack is to um, click on your troop attack and that will increase your um, attack boost the similar to well, when I just showed you in the in the Gang of Bandits, whenever you are uh, setting a rally, this is where you go to increase your troop attack, um, boost it, without going into a rally to do it, right? Um, there's also research. <laughs> when you go into your research, you have the combat level and it, it unlocks... Once you research to the top one, your artillery defense, attack, the cowboy infantry, cavalry, range, the attack. That's how you get it to the top marks. So um, my range attack, my current bonus is 136%. So I've reached the max level on that. And I'm actually max on my uh, research for my um, uh, combat side here. And I'm sure once I get to uh, the advanced combat, there will be more um, to research so that I can increase my attack stats on that. When you go to the suburban town and you go to your research, uh, there's also the mercenary combat. And you can build up your mercenary specific infantry attack um, similar to cavalry and range. And then it also has defense and restraint and unlocking all of the different levels there um mercenary defense but if you want to focus on your attack um then you can click on that and see exactly how much your attack will increase as you go up so you can see the current bonus because i'm currently building this particular one right now it's going from 48 percent to 60 percent so in just building and just researching this it increases my bonus by 20 percent um so i want to work on my range attack next and so like you said going from level seven to level eight i'm going to increase my bonus by 20 percent by just doing research and so if you want to work on your attack for the specific types which i suggest you do um especially this is a war this is a fighting game a lot of people fight even though i choose not to fight all the time i have fun doing the farming, doing this, helping people when I can, making these videos for you guys. Um, I, I'm still going to research everything so that I can, I can, I can continue to grow. I'm just, I'm just slow at doing it. All right. So make sure you're doing research. All right. Additionally to, uh, raising your attack statistics is, um, there are several buildings that increase your troops attack stats. And so we're gonna go through all of the buildings that do that so you can make sure you're continually uh, upgrading them. Um, for instance, if you go to the jail, 
there are no uh, boosts to your attack statistics until you get to level 21. And this is only dependent on if you have a sheriff imprisoned. So at level 21, if you have a sheriff that's between 1 and 20 that you have imprisoned, your troop attack is increased by 2%. But if you have a level 60, your troop attack is increased by 35%. And then it ups at prison is at 26. Um, then that increases. So if you have a level 36 prison and you capture a level 60 sheriff, your attack uh, statistics will improve by 70%. So this is a good way to uh, know when and where you're going to um, be able to have use of this. And this isn't a continual thing. It's only when you have a, a sheriff imprisoned. So take mind of this. When you are looking in the jail, um, you can only improve your attack statistics when you have a sheriff imprisoned, okay? All right, another one that a lot of people don't realize is the church. It improves your uh, troop attack right there in that second column. As you get bigger and bigger, it, as your church is grown to a bigger size, it improves your troop attack as well. When you are the biggest, you'll have almost 41% troop attack uh, boost. So these are great things to make sure you are continually building all of these buildings. Um, one that a lot of people don't realize is the cabin. Um, it increases your troop training speed, but when you look in here and you go to the very bottom, whenever you have level 21 or above, the cabin actually improves your troop attack, not by very much, but it does improve uh, as you get to 21 and above it increases it by an additional two percent um then at 26 three percent three percent and um all the way up to uh, level 36 when it increases it by eight percent not very much with a cabin but if you had say six cabins that'd be whatever level you are at for those cabins um, say if they're all at level 26, then that's six times the additional 3% that you just added on top of all the other levels to level 21. So it just keeps adding every one you do. So if you're only, if you only have one cabin and you're increasing it one by one by one, you're only going to add 3%, 3%, 3%, and then at 26, um, or excuse me, 2%, and then 3% at 26. So make sure that you um, are taking full use of the cabins. Um, a lot of these buildings have multiple things that you can use them for. Uh, I'm sure the game makers will continue to change the game. When I started, we didn't even have the suburban town. And um, we didn't even have T5s. And getting to the T4 level was incredibly difficult. And but everybody did it like there were people um, maxing out. And um, I mean, there's there's ways to increase your attack there and and there's ways to to not. But understanding, I think the most difficult thing for people to understand is the gear and the crystals. That's the most difficult thing. And so um, I'm going to be making more videos in the future that are going to go into detail, much more detail about um forging gear, finding what's the best gear for different types of things, and then um, um, inlaying the crystals and understanding the crystals and understanding like the different things you're getting so that you can really implement uh, some good gear for your sheriff. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, find me on the game uh, in the line chatting app. Uh, my details are below that will show you my ID for those and uh, I hope you guys are having a great day and um, talk to you later stay positive all right bye guys